Hello and welcome to Tread Lightly, the podcast of two dinosaurs talking about books over a nice cup of tea. It's T-Rex and Raptor coming all the way from Germany and Australia to you to talk about today's book, The Last Wish by Andrei Sapkowski. Yes, so this is the, kind of the first book in the series, but also the prequel to the series. Yeah, so it's a collection of short stories that he wrote about The Witcher before he made the full-length books, and then it got discontinued as a book. <laughs> uh, all the short stories kind of got discontinued, so it got made into one book where it's just him reflecting on his life, right? Yeah, I mean, I kind of like the idea of putting short stories up like that a bit more than the actual series. Uh, I don't know, I just, yeah. yeah I, ho- well, I, I like really the whole like- setting of the book, of just putting the short stories together, making them fit really nicely, so... Yeah, and I, I kind of like that they're just kind of a little bit all over the place, too. Like, you don't really have any idea what's going on. <laughs> yes. You know, that said, maybe you should read the blurb and we can have a spoiler-free discussion about it first. Yes, you go ahead. Here we go. Geralt was always going to stand out with his white hair and piercing eyes, his cynicism and lack of respect for authority, but he's far more than his striking appearance. He's a witcher with powers that make him a brilliant fighter and a merciless assassin, and his targets are the vile fiends that ravage the land. As guardian of the innocent, Geralt meets incestuous kings with undead daughters, vengeful djinns, shrieking harpies, lovelorn vampires, and despondent ghouls. Oof, that's a word. (laughs) Men are pernicious, some are wicked, and none are quite as they appear. So, you know, that's it, that's the blurb. Dun, yeah, it's, it's, build, it's building up quite a tone, isn't it? Mm. Okay. Um, like that pretty much covers off all of the stories, actually. Yeah, it does. Good blow. I think we came to the book pretty much because of the so announcement of the TV show, right? Yeah, well, when the TV show got announced, I was like, it's a book? <laughs> and then we yes, had to go and find same. it, so... I um I did yeah. play some of the video games before the TV show came out, so I got really excited about the TV show, but I never actually read the books. Like I knew they were out there, but I never kind of found the time to get into that. Really? Well, I am the world's worst video game player, literally ever. I have like 20 minute blocks, and then I'm like violently ill from like. Um, I just I just can't handle it. And if there is a hole, right? If anywhere in the field of play, there is a part where the creators were like, you can't get, you can't really get there. It's fine. We don't have to worry about the video game mechanics in that point. I will fall into that space. And <laughs> I played Elder Scrolls, uh, like, several times over, and every time I ended up in the same fucking hole. I fell down the side of a mountain, got stuck on a ledge, and <laughs> couldn't go anywhere because I couldn't jump off the edge because I'm not allowed to die. Okay, you can't like throw myself off a cliff. It was the worst. And I did it on the weekend recently too. We we're playing some like stupid like party game where you 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 supposed a uh, screen cheat. That's what it is. And um, I I found the only hole in in that whole like flat surface was like in between a building and like a planter box. And I got stuck in there. And I had to wait for somebody <laughs> to come shoot me to I could get out of it. So basically, we have to rent you out as a game tester. No, please don't. Yes, yeah, you can find all the holes that need fixing. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. No, I'll just keep finding the same hole. <laughs> the, the one hole. Anyway, so aside from my terrible playing of video games, sh- shall we have a bit of discussion about the book instead? <laughs> yes. Well, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I was kind of unsure in the beginning because the whole... The whole opening of it is just kind of weird, but um, overall I really enjoyed it. I like the way they, they tie the stories together, and yeah, the whole thing about the short stories just makes it interesting in comparison to most books who just went with a straight storyline right ahead. Yeah, it's uh, I really like that it, the story came from the, like this character came from all the short stories, because we have an idea of what his adventures are like before we get to the to the main story, basically. Who the characters are before we even get to that point. And 
and I think d- not solely to reflect upon the movie or the TV show at all, but the TV show took a lot from the short stories to like fill out that that opening, and I think it's super important all those details that were in it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's one of the reasons why the TV show actually did a fairly good job on the whole adaptation. So, having read it first, it amused me to no end the the number of people that were getting confused by the timeline stuff. Because (laughs) the book is written out of time anyway, so, like, I just 100% expected it to not be be in time itself. Yeah, I wasn't sure how they're going to do it. I also wasn't sure if they're actually paying a lot of attention to the to the whole setup of short stories, or if they're going straight ahead just doing the first or first and second book in the series. But it was kind of fun just having a lot of people going, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, I, I watched it with my brother, and I think I must have given it a, a, away a little bit too much for him, you know? Yeah, so. I just binged watched it in one setting, so... My brother and I watched the first six episodes together, and then we, uh, I left the country, and so I couldn't watch it with him anymore. I had to watch them on my own. But I think I'd given him enough of a heads up about what was happening, like Ari, the timeline, so that it wasn't too much of a drama. I think most people got it in the end. It just took a little bit to, to yeah. get there. Maybe, maybe we should move on to, to just reviewing the book without any spoilers, because <laughs> there's so many things I want to say. Yes. Um, do you want to give the book a rating, though, first? Yeah. Um, so I'm a big fan, although it uses a lot of probably arcane English terms. So as a natural English speaker, a lot of the terms didn't kind of come naturally. Um, I think that that's just because there probably wasn't a good like colloquial translation for it. So, so it was a little bit on the more difficult side to, to read. It wasn't super easily digestible. But I still, I really like the story. Just really like the story in general. So, yeah, I'd probably give it um, a four out of five. Hmm, nice. What about you? Um, I, I don't know since I didn't actually read it in any other language. I only read it in English, which now makes me wonder what sort of vocabulary choice they might have taken in different translations. But um, I found it easy to read. A couple of words well, came out of context, but I didn't know them beforehand. Um, I also did part of it um, as an audiobook, just because time-wise, which I can only recommend. They're really good. But overall, the story, I think, was just really, really good. So I would probably go with the four and a half. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. If you haven't read it, please understand that we're now talking about spoilers, and if you want to go and read it, go and read it and come back, because this this bit isn't for you anymore. <laughs> unless you like spoiling yourself and not reading books. Yeah. For unless you don't want to read it. Yeah, and if you don't want to read it and you just want to hear us talk about it, then go for it. Stick around, but... uh. <laughs> If you want to read it for yourself, bugger off and come back later. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. So just back to our movie topic previ- or TV show topic previously. We were talking about like how well the shifting timelines are done. There was like, so I heard somebody make a comment where like they didn't like age Yaskia enough throughout the the show, so that it like it was be more obvious if they'd like shown him aging but I think in the books too he somehow like got this thing where he's pretty long livid himself like and that's never really addressed so I think I don't know like what they're trying to like tie in here yeah I think what storyline's doing I had the feeling they just they didn't really give a fuck about the whole what age is who when and also if they do age them up at some stages I think it would have given away the whole mystery of the timelines a bit too quickly. Yeah. And the books, I mean, the the books never really... Yeah, I mean, the books never address any of the aging properly. It's just all, well, there's magic, and this is just this is just the way to stop asking questions. Yeah, but um, Yennefer and Geralt are long-lived anyway, because yeah. magic. But 
technically, Yasuki is supposed to be human. Yeah. So really, he should he's, be an old man. He's got a, a taste. Yeah, he's just got a taste for danger. <laughs> and apparently, not aging properly on the TV show. Yeah, I think they're gonna like address that whole thing later because you know, he doesn't really age like a normal person, does he? Anyway, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I haven't finished reading the book, so maybe there'll there'll be more answers in the books <laughs> further on we go. Yeah, I actually haven't either, so we'll see how that one goes. I keep going. I've got theories. I've got theories. Sleeps with so many people. It's like inverse syphilis. Anyway. Um, <laughs> we we have the beginning of the, the plot. Yes. So we kind of start out with Geralt um, being in a religious temple. I think it's the temple of um, Melitelli or something. Um, yeah, but we don't really find that out until later. We've just she enters. She smells like sea foam. <laughs> They screw, and then yes. he has a dream. Yes, it's it was a crazy opening because I, yeah, I didn't expect the book to just start with a fucking sex scene. Not to mention that yeah. the whole scene is really strangely written because as he like as he's having that dream slash I don't know flashback and starts remembering the trigger, it's like half of I'm having sex with this girl and half of I'm having sex with the trigger, and that. It really took me by surprise. I didn't know what to do with that one. I just, I get sometimes you want to last a little bit longer. Not really the topic I've been trying to keep in mind. you got to think of the Queen, right? Think of England. <laughs> yeah, lie back and think of England. Strigger is not the first place I would go to. It's just so, super weird. Strigger is like a weird translation of the word vampire, though, isn't it? Um, just, like, cover that off. Yes, maybe. Yeah, I think most times most times it's translated into English as meaning vampire, but I guess we talk about vampires later in the story, so we don't want to confuse it to, with this creature. Yeah, I think a lot but of... But also, the... I'm not really up to date on my mythology. Yeah, I'm also not sure how, how much is taken from actual um, Polish fairy tales and... And those type things, and which ones are just from the broader, I don't know, definition of, of weird monsters. Well, yeah, I mean, Striga is listed as like, one of the creatures of the undead and frequently is correlated with like vampire mythology, and you get a lot of crossover there. But he references both of them, so I, I'm guessing that there's multiple types of vampires, which sucks if you're Polish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, she also doesn't just drink people's blood so yeah she eats them like hollis bolus she's like she's like a zombie but she was born i don't know moving on after our really abrupt opening scene <laughs> we uh get Geralt thinking about that time where he did a thing for a king and that is kind of it go an interesting way about telling the story and i think it's it's it gives you a pretty prudent indication of the character that he wants to portray. So the Geralt walks into a bar, but it's third person, and most of the story is written in third person. But we're getting an outsider's perspective on what he looks like to everybody else. And it is fucking terrifying. Like, yeah, it's not, he's not an easy bloke to get along with, like, at all. He's um big, blonde. <laughs> And foreign, and everybody's like, ooh, this guy. Um, especially in what seems to, to be a time, beer. I think, especially in yeah. a time where being foreign and just looking out of place is not the easiest thing to be in the first place, and then having the title of being a witcher does not help you at all. Yeah, well, no, look, they're more okay with the witcher thing and less okay with where he's apparently born, which is Geralt of Rivia. Yes, slightly anti semite people around yeah. everywhere. <laughs> so these anti-foreigners are against him having a beer, one of their beers, I imagine. Um, so they try to pick a fight, and Carol's like, ha, 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 and then two of them are dead. Uh, <laughs> um, to be fair, we also have one of my favorite quotes from the book in that scene, where it's just, at the beginning, they're just, 
oh, like yeah. throwing insults at each other and one of the guys from from that group <laughs> is just then um, Gerald I think insults his mother at some stage and then one of the guys just goes you know did he just insult your mother they, yeah that's not right a mother you son of a bitch is sacred <laughs> Yeah, I enjoy one of the lines in the story too that that's like um that G- Geralt didn't want to defend Rivia because who wants to defend Rivia anyway? <laughs> like <laughs> I think it's a pretty pertinent like kind of discussion about you know who he is, where he's from, all these kind of things, and then he just kind of like intimidates the guards that come to arrest him, and be like, Nah, take me to whoever's in charge, take me to your leader. I saw this sign. I'm here. I'm here for a job. Then we toddle off to the. I'm, I'm gonna say it's like, mayor is the best translation. Yeah, probably. I would. I would sign mayor. Yes. He goes. Well, I'm gonna kill you for killing all of these people. And then he's like, Oh, you're a witcher. You're gonna solve our problem. Okay, it's fine. Have a beer. Uh, <laughs> anyway, from. Oh Lordy Mayor, we've we we learn that the king had an incestuous relationship with his sister. Yes, which is how all the great stories start. Yeah, he's a bit of a wild card. Nobody's really sure what to do with this king. And then uh, the king's sister ended up pregnant, and he was like, "No, nah, I'm going to marry my sister." And everybody's like, "Woohoo, no, sir!" <laughs> the sister then dies during pregnancy, and so does the baby, kind of, but not quite. Yeah, I think they went to bury her, and then the kid decided, um, yeah, fuck this, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving up. Yeah. <laughs> so I think they buried her and the kid, and then the kid kind of decided very late, late in the show to kind of pop up, yay. Well, so I think it's described as the the child is trapped in the tomb with the mother, with only the mother to eat. And then yeah. at seven, they're basically strong enough to actually break out of the coffin. Yeah, we're just not a creepy description at all. Just imagining that kid for seven years to live in a coffin with the corpse of its mother that it's slowly eating. Yeah, I mean, do you really recall the first seven years of your life? Can you attest to the <laughs> fact that you didn't do the same? I mean, I would say... For the first like four or five years, um, I'm I'm not hundred percent sure. I'll give you that one. Excellent. <laughs> I'm glad we're on board. We have the same kind of childhood then. <laughs> yes, pretty much. All right. So from there, Geralt like takes the job. Sweet, easy. Uh, and we end up battling this trigger in the middle of the night. Yeah, just, just kind blow of blow for blow. Yeah, I mean, we also have that tiny subplot of one of the the king's um, advisors, or whatever you want to call him, who yeah. kind of turns out to be the one who cursed the mother and therefore the child. Kind of not really realizing what he's doing, but still doing it because he was in love with the king's sister and was like, why are you choosing your incestuous brother, brother instead of me? And, yeah. Um, yeah, so he kind of, he shows up at the abandoned uh, castle where the Strigger is, is running loose, killing people at night, and is trying to to talk to Geralt, at which point we, we find out what he actually did, and then Geralt is like, well, you should probably run, which doesn't really help you when the Strigger is after you, so that was No, the I don't think it, yeah, I think... When faced with this trigger, walk, don't run. You'll just look like prey. I mean, I don't know if either thing helps. I think when being chased by a trigger, you might as well give up now. No, I want one of those, like, iron uh, suits that were for when you're wrestling bears with all the <laughs> spiky bits on the outside. Um, bear hunting suit. Yeah, that's what I think. I think it'd be super effective. Sure, we'll, we'll test it out sometime. Yeah. Anybody let me know if you find a Strigger. Yes, if, if you know of an abandoned castle in Poland that has some rumours about it, we'll be there in a bear hunting suit. Truth. Having unravelled the plot about who cursed the who cursed the mother and baby to die, basically, 
We then learn that we have to keep the Stabiga out of the coffin until the cock crows three times. Yeah. Just real is... biblical there. <laughs> yes. It just feels really arbitrary. Mm. Yeah. Well, then it's definitely morning, you know, because the first one, you're real sleepy. Second one, you're really trying to give it a go. The third one, it's like, yeah, no, I'm here. I'm here, bitches. I'm here. <laughs> Yeah, and pretty much yeah. he, he succeeds hiding in the in the coffin of the Strigger and making sure she can't get in there until the the third crow is being heard and then ta da Yeah, we have a fourteen year old that doesn't know anything. It's basically a baby in a fourteen year old body. Yeah, Terrifying. I mean to be fair, she looked like a savage animal for fourteen years, so that has to fuck up your psyche. Uh, yeah, well, look, I'm hoping that she doesn't remember, to be honest. I don't know. I mean, it's been a pretty long time. I don't think she's ever going to be normal part of society sort of person. Uh, look, you, you can overcome a lot. You can overcome a lot. Yeah, but you don't do it without some amount of scarring. I mean... Yeah, she, look, she as pretty, long as... She her... straight up murdered... God knows how many people. I mean, some of that has yeah, to stay with her. Yeah, but her dad loves her no matter what, so ah, she'll get the care she needs. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's the old, mm, love conquers all. Yeah, love conquers all. God. Why no, are you no. Yeah, I'm, I'm the cynical pessimist over here. This girl is fucked up for decades to come. Fucked up. I'm not saying she's not, she doesn't have issues. I'm just saying she can, she'll get close. She'll achieve things. She can achieve things. Yeah, she's a like chance. getting dressed in the morning and eating full meals. Yeah, and not peeing herself. But those, those are things that she can achieve. Yes. And yes. eventually she can bear more children and they'll be raised to, to, to run a kingdom because that's <laughs> definitely what you want in your family line. I mean... In those times and sort of societies, it's not like she's supposed you know to what? do anything else than just pop out kids. So I suppose, honest, yes. Maybe she's a great ruler because she's super vicious and she keeps her borders maintained and she's like on top of it because she's got a thirst for blood. Yeah, and she goes and kills to, everybody she for the horse. minor. <laughs> and kills everybody for minor inconvenience. Look... <laughs> but the but the kingdom's really stable and there's uh, constant economic growth, so it's fine. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll maybe we'll get a, a spin-off on how the former Stringer decided to run the country. To be, I would not be surprised if Geralt pops back up in her life and she's like, "Oh, great, you again." <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure he's getting himself another child of surprise there. You, you jump in the gun a little bit. What if these people here haven't listened to the or watched the TV show? Well, we'll get to that part. It's fine. Don't worry. It'll make yeah. sense soon. Shortly. Um, cool. So once we've saved everybody and got our cash money and rolled out of town because we killed three people. <laughs> as, as, a, as a witcher does. Um, we have a flash. I usually yeah. be part of the deal. So we have a flashback to the temple. Oh, well, flash. We return to the current. Um, <laughs> yes. And we, we're we back in the temple. Um, I guess now would be your chance to talk about all the different temple-y things. I guess it's just the, the temple return scenes are all the way of kind of linking the stories together and, like, where Geralt goes to recover from heartbreak or from real Injury. life the trigger ripping out your throat it's fine yeah i mean yeah he rolls up oh, there every time the he has out his throat. <laughs> yes i mean he rolls up there every time he has like really great injury that he can't really take care of himself and he's just like this one i don't know nun maybe or a priestess uh High priestess neneke of... yeah yeah oh uh, who's just kind of used to all that shit. Like, oh, Geralt is coming into town. He probably is missing a limb or something. Let's get somebody to put a band-aid on that. Yeah, she also, like, regularly encourages her, her priestesses to, like, sleep with him. So, like... I mean, I'm, I'm pretty okay with this order. Mm. It seems much more interesting than just a fucking nunnery. 
Yeah, look, this is this is somewhere where I can definitely see you ending up, but um <laughs> You mean in a weird temple of cold society where the nuns just sleep with people? Yeah, and practice some version of medicine. <laughs> mm, okay. Look, is it too dissimilar from the life you're currently leading? I mean, I'm not practicing any worshipping of any kind, but... Yet. Uh, I'm not really into the worshipping kind of weird things, well, but... I you guess don't know what f- kind of worship they do. You can Actually, be worshipping you like. <laughs> it's really strange, though, isn't it, that we never are actually told what they worship. It's just, we worship stuff, don't ask questions. Yeah, I just thought, kind of like the female empowerment temple, but... <laughs> I like that. It's just, it's the cult of the female empowerment. Independent woman. <laughs> ah, um, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I think we have, like, a conversation between Geralt and Neneke. I don't know how they actually pronounce her name. It's, ah, oh, those fucking fantasy names again. Yeah, and because she's not referenced in the book really at all. Uh, sorry, in the TV show at all. We've I have no idea how to pronounce. Yeah, that. yeah. I think and I think she was trying to convince him to to let her put him in a trance, like kind of. Oh, uh, she came, to... she wants she basically she wants to do a a few, uh, like a future telling with him in it. Um, yeah, which because she wants to know what, like what all the like. Control. Uh, I don't know that it's 100% mind control. She's, like, looking to see what, where... Because all these, like, threads of fate around are wound around him, and she's like, I want to know what is going on. And he's like, nah, I'm G, baby. And he's like, <laughs> and she's like, nah, seriously, tell me what's going on. <laughs> uh, yeah. And they do, I mean, they keep talking about faith even though I'm not actually talking about which kind of faith, or faith in what. But I mean, it's... I think it's faith and fate. Like, they're kind of intertwined in the story. you got to think, like, r- r- almost paganism to me. It comes across it's different types of paganism. Yeah. But I guess they could probably have... They believe in a goddess, so, I don't know, something. <laughs> Some uh, female empowerment thing. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that one. Oh, and then next up, I think we have the, um, I think next up we have the, the story of him wandering the woods, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we, um, it's the Castle of the Beast. That's yes. my best, um, description of it. So he I think he wanders finds, around. Yeah, I think sorry. he finds a couple of, I think he finds a couple of corpses around the woods and just decided, hey, it's like red crumbs, let's follow the corpses. Yeah, uh, isn't he like, he doesn't want to take the main road for some reason? He wants, oh, he, there are no monsters on the main road, so, because the only monsters on the main road are people, he's trying to find some, like, back roads to get to where he's going. Yeah. And, and in doing that, he finds a couple of corpses. <laughs> As you do. Yeah, and then he follows the corpse crumbs back to this mansion. <laughs> Just like yeah. oh, and there's a woman, right, who watches him. Yeah. And like notices that there's like a, this girl watching him from the trees. Which isn't sinister at all. No, not at all. Yeah, so I think he he gets to the house, and then you have like a kind of a bear human mix. Yeah, I think kind of like. I think um, Beauty and the Beast. Beast. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of how I imagined it in my head, too. Doesn't he have horns as well? But maybe that's just me. Uh, I'm not sure. I think he's just fucking furry. Also, the name, I think it's Nivellen. Just has a... Nivellen. <laughs> Nivellen. <laughs> the good old Ellen, with his furry skin, is trying to... To scare um, Geralt away, and Geralt is just like, <laughs> you know, no, I've, no, no, I've, no, I've no. killed, I've killed scarier things than you. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, just, just tell me what's going on. If you're really a mindless beast, then I'll murder you. If you're not really a mindless beast and you're just trying to live in peace, that's fine. Like I don't care. <laughs> yeah, there's no money in that. Yeah, so I mean, he goes back a couple of times, and then finally gets the guy's story, right? Yeah, we I think it was. About... Yeah, I think it was the whole point of 
once again, it's a curse because everything has to be a curse. And um, I think he he actually at some point raped a priestess from a temple. And then the priestesses from the temple, being super cool witch women as they are, just cursed him to be a fucking beast. Yeah. Yeah, so from there on, he it's like he basically he drives everyone away because he's terrified about himself and his self-esteem plummets and <laughs> he, become, he basically becomes a beast. And then he meets a girl, and I believe the term is girl, definitely not woman, who, like, hangs out and plays with him and is super, like, cool with it. Uh, and then he gives, when she's a little bit too old of marrying <laughs> age, gives her a bunch of money and sends her on her way. Yeah, and then... But that starts the weird, weirdest fucking custom ever of people with daughters to just come by, rent out their daughters to him for money. Yeah, they're like, they get, they, they're with him for like a year or something, and then they get enough for a dowry and they're off. <laughs> yes. Like. And it's definitely made clear that he fucks more than one of them. Yeah. Which is just super strange. Like, okay, honey, we're going into the woods now. You're going to live for about a year with this weird monster. Don't worry, you'll like him. You guys sleep with each other, but don't worry. Once you come back, we'll get you married off. Yeah. So that kind of brings us to where we, to the present day in the story, where uh, Ellen has a new friend, Verena. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man, the names, the names. So um, Ellen and V having this great little thing. Yeah. But, uh... Geralt has some questions about V. I mean, she looks like a girl, not woman, girl. <laughs> and he's got questions. She doesn't talk much, though, you know? She's just not, very, not a very chatty kind of person. But, you know, they spend ages playing together, and they have tons of fun. Yeah, mm. it's slightly creepy. We, yeah. I mean, I think it's then that Geralt kind of identifies her as Bruxa, I think it's called. Which is, once again, a vampire-like monster. Yeah. With some telepathy going on. Yeah, look, Poland, man, I have no idea. But, you know, they're desperately in love. You know, Ellen's really insistent that they're in love. <laughs> Definitely in love. Yes, so much love. Geralt, just leave. There's so much love. And then... So Geralt is like, nah, we cool, and tries to leave. And then for some reason he comes back again? Um, I think he, I think it's, it's, um, the, um, Geralt's horse, um, help me with the name, fuck. Yes, yes, that's how he sounds. <laughs> um, no, it's just, um, I think his horse was acting really strangely around V and then he's on his way back and then all of a sudden he's like mm, I think I want to trust the horse more than my own instinct mm, I don't think this is a great thing and then Verena I think just crosses his path and is attempting to kill him because she doesn't trust him not to I don't know. Them. Yeah, to, to tell on them or send anybody back. Roach. The like horse's that. name is Roach. I had to Google it. Roach. There we go. A horse called Roach. <laughs> As you do. I'm, I'm the next dog cat. It's going to be sweet. Ah, excellent. Yeah, so they're in a desperate fight for their lives for no good reason other than both of them are a dick. <laughs> As, As Geralt turns out to be in a lot of those stories. He's um, like, once he's decided you're a monster. That's kind of it. I mean, we then we then ha also have Alan join <laughs> the fighting yeah, party. but on Geralt's side, I don't know whether or not, like, Marina has switched into, like, another form or something, but he, like, stabs her through with a pike or a pole. <laughs> yes. And then there's professions of undying love, hither and thither, and then we end up with everybody's curse is lifted, but the vampire thing's dead. <laughs> yes, so it turns, yeah, it turns out that Ellen's curse actually had a, a release button, just that nobody fucking knew what it was, and now he's, like, free and a human again, and whoop whoop. 
Yeah, because somebody fell in love with him despite his beastly status. Which, you know, definitely this whole story is Beauty and the Beast from another angle. But, yes, um, it definitely is. I mean, we also have the house that obeys all of Alan's commands, which is really like the living <laughs> furniture doing what he wants. Oh, uh, yeah. It's it's like a really weirdly spun Disney, Disney story. I mean, who knows? Maybe that's what the actual story was about before Disney came along and was like, well, this is too much blood. Yeah, possibly. It, it, I thought it was a French fairy tale, but it could be Polish. I mean, let's face it, the French weren't exactly tame when it came to fairy tales either. It's like the whole Grimm stories. It's not like they were actually all that lovey-dovey happy ending. There was a lot of blood just eating uh, people. I don't disagree. You're, you're just thinking of Hansel and Gretel now, but like, I genuinely don't disagree. Except for the fact that like, the woman that falls in love with him, or the girl that falls in love with him, also <laughs> happens to be a vampire. That just seems very Polish to me. Everything is a vampire. Yes, everything needs to be a vampire-like creature. That's important. So, this is what I've learned about Poland so far. Everything is a vampire. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's, that's pretty much accurate. That's why you yeah. always need garlic before you go over the border. Don't you know? No, I've never been to Poland. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll put it on the list to fix. Sure, when I have t- some time on my hands. So probably never, but okay. Yeah, when I retire, <laughs> we'll go to Poland and find ourselves some vampires in some castle. Excellent. I always wanted me a castle. Anyway, moving on. So this is not a ridiculously long episode again. Yes, the first one and the longest. Let's go for that. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, cool. Everybody's dead. Uh, no, the vampire's dead. Um, <laughs> Ellen is human again and has the opportunity to live a life and marry a human woman. Cool, we're out. Yay. Alrighty, um, I think next we're back at the temple once again. Yeah, we're always back at the temple. We're always fighting with whatever her name is about... Neneke. The things. Nen- Neneke. <laughs> about, you know, fate and medicine. Yeah, I think that's when um I think that's when some knights are turning up at the temple trying oh. to recruit Geralt. Is it? Is that is that early in the book? Alright. I've forgotten. Yes, I'm pretty sure it is. But also don't they like hate him? Isn't that Yes. They yes. They, they both they don't want to recruit him, they want to murder him. Huh. Don't they? Isn't that? They, they definitely yes, want no, him. Right. They're like, he needs to come out. We have to arrest him. And oh, the, yes, the, yes. And Neve is like, nah, mate. Nah, <laughs> not, not, not my temple. Because um, it's really bogan, you see. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I was like, was... nah, I'll leave. I'm self sacrificing sometimes when I'm not a dick. And she's like, just chill, fam. <laughs> just chill. We yes, got, she said it while she, she was having a while well, she was having a beer in her cooler. Look, <laughs> she's got an esky on wheels, it's motorized, follows her wherever she goes, and she'll be right, you know? She's right. Yes, that's pretty much the image I have in my head now. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different kind of story. <laughs> it's it's Australian it's... interpretation. <laughs> It's okay, we'll do an Australian um, translation. It'll be fine. Mate, 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 mate. Okay, um, so we we now get treated to the great story of Geralt showing up in a town called Blaviken, which is a ridiculous town name. It's it's like, it's basically Blacken, isn't it? I mean, yeah, but it just, ah, it just sounds ridiculous. I, I don't know why, but the name of that town bothered me a lot throughout the book. You're German. How can that town name bother you? Have you seen any of your town names? Yes, and a whole lot of them bother me as well. <laughs> and don't go ahead and call me German. I take that not very lightly. I'm Okay, sorry, you were an English person born into a German body. <laughs> Okay, so basically, he shows up in the town, and this, I think it's this girl that 
turns up to him and goes like, hey, buddy, the wizard wants to see you, which is just a normal thing that people tell you. I mean, yes, but he turns up with a monster carcass and he's like, hey, somebody want to pay me for this? And everybody's like, no, why did you bring that here? Mm, No, thank you. And uh, I think, again, girl, she's 14. Yeah, I don't know why everybody has to be an underage girl. I'm not, I don't want to dwell on it. I strongly don't want to dwell on it. The wizard in the tower will see you for your stupid monster carcass. Yeah, which, I mean, just, hey, we have a town wizard. That in itself should be a really strange sentence to say. Look, I think more towns had wizards than not. It's your alchemist medicinal nut job Mm, with enough money to buy a tower. (laughs) Yes, because, I mean, who's going to know your wizard if you don't have a tower? Mm, Exactly, exactly. Mm. Okay. So we have Geralt showing up at the doorstep of Super Fancy Wizard. Yeah. Who then goes, hey, I might have a slight job for you there. I think it's when the wizard um, tells us this whole story about women being born um, at some celestial event, and it's very bad. Yeah, and it means that they all turned out to be killers and weird monsters and they all need to be killed but he didn't manage to kill one of them and that one oh, no, he locked them up. up in towers and didn't murdered them super subtly super subtly <laughs> yeah I mean in the end he killed them all except for one who is now trying to kill him so that he doesn't kill her which is just a great situation fair enough yeah and it also has that that great exchange between Geralt and the wizard where he tells him this this whole story and this whole like prophecy and prediction and it's all gonna happen like this and then it's all terrible and Geralt just going yeah that's bullshit like the story didn't even rhyme like all the great predictions have to rhyme <laughs> it's yeah. just great like the sarcasm of Geralt is very much to be I love it. I so desperately approve of incredibly dry humor. Yes. yes. Like I was raised on this stuff. Definitely. Uh, anyway, so our assassin, assassin is called <laughs> uh, Renfrey. Yeah, which also is a strange girl's name. I don't know. I know. Is it like it's it's like Renfield? We're thinking like <laughs> the guy who helps out yes. Dracula. It's yeah. yeah. Kind of the first thing your mind runs to is with it. Yeah. It's like, I don't know if that's kind of, like, supposed to be on point, like she's a in service to the devil kind of thing, or... Yeah, I don't know. Just, or is it just a vampire obsession? It's just the Polish, and everything has to be vampire. <laughs> At least the, if it's not a vampire, it's vampire adjacent. Yes, that's pretty much it now. We figured you out, Andre. We figured you out. Yeah! Whatever your name is... <laughs> Okay, so we have, um, yeah, we have the whole story about it. We have Geralt being like, well, I'm not going to help you kill this woman just because you say she's been born under really bad stars and has to be a monster. This doesn't seem like great confirmation for me. And he, uh, I think he straight up leaves the wizard. Yeah, and he's then, like, you're weirder. Yeah, and, and then, immediately runs into her into a ta- in a tavern, right? <laughs> yes, not like she's waited for him at all. Yeah. And she's like, you have to kill the wizard for me. And he's like, I don't want to get caught up in your drama, girl. <laughs> well, why I does not everybody have time ask for you to kill them? Yeah, I'm not an Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm not ready for this shit. Yeah, so that's not... That's strange at all. So basically, she's like, "Well, you have to choose. Either you're gonna you're gonna kill him, or you're gonna kill me. Like you you can't just sit around doing nothing. You have to choose a side." Basically, we have this whole like dramatic line of you have to choose the lesser evil. Where Gail was like, oh, "I don't want to choose anything. You guys do your evil." evil. Yeah, yeah, which kind of comes back to bite him in the ass. Yeah. So um, I think he sleeps with her. Yes, pretty much, because she's like, well, he doesn't seem to be swayed by my words. Let's sway him with my naked body. That also doesn't work. 
Um, no. And then there's the like, then we have the showdown in the marketplace. Sh- yes. Showdown. We just pretty much ran free going, well, I gave you the choice to choose a side. You didn't really choose a side, so now I'm going to decide you're choosing against me, so let's fucking fight. Yeah, I think the, the original threat is she's going to kill all the people in the market. Yeah. Just until the wizard shows up, right? Yeah, and the wizard doesn't give a fuck, so Geralt has to be the one who gives a fuck about the people. Yeah, and Geralt kills everybody. Yes, all of her men, and then eventually her. Yeah. And then the wizard's like, oh, I want her body, and Geralt's like, no, don't! <laughs> anyway, what the fuck and is then wrong then with the, you? Yeah. And then the wizard leaves and is like, well, as far as the village is concerned, you just murdered a bunch of people for no reason. <laughs> And then he has to, like, fucking run off, doesn't he? Yes, and he gets the nickname of the Butcher of Blaviken. Butcher, butcher of Blaviken. <laughs> yes, Blaviken. one of the great names. Great names. Um, and we also didn't mention at all the prophecy from Renfrey, the vampire-adjacent named character. <laughs> <laughs> I think the TV show made it a bit more prominent that he was actually having feelings for her when he had to kill her, which I think the books didn't bring out that strongly. No, but he doesn't really have feelings for her in the book any more than he's like, I don't really want to kill people. Yeah, especially kill since you didn't seem bad. No. It's like, you just, you pushed me too far. I don't want you dead. You've decided you want to be dead. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yes. So, do you remember the actual wording of the the prophecy that Renfrey gave him? Uh, no. Well, pretty much it just comes out at you have a destiny and you have to find your destiny. Yeah, you have to follow your destiny. Which, I mean, the books are very big on the whole of destiny. Destiny, destiny! Because it's fate. You're fated to do stuff. Yeah. They're, they're very, the lines very heavy handed. They converge handed. on the Witcher. <laughs> Got a chosen destiny. Dum 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 dum. Which is kind of pointless because if it's a destiny, there's no point in choosing anything. Yeah. Uh, well, after the whole massacre in the town, we are back at the um, back at the temple, where I think Geralt is talking to the girl he was screwing in the first. Chapter. She's I mute, so I. She's not. They're not having a conversation. No, he's having a monologue at her. Isn't it? Is no. He's talking to the um, the prophetess chick. The e e something or other. Uh, it starts with, it's like I G. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Um, okay, I thought he was talking to Lola. Ah, uh, never mind. Well, in any case, we get a bit of the whole Witcher backstory, at least a bit. And yeah, at least we, a bit. Yeah, we kind of get a segue into our next short story. Okay, it's Iola. You're right on the name, but Iola is the name of the prophetess character rather than the mute that he was screwing ah, in the first okay. episode. The first bit. I'll mix up those two priestesses. Okay. Yeah, because the mute one doesn't do anything. <laughs> Except for having sex, okay? That's an activity. So, we're going into our next adventure, where we just have Geralt getting all fancy and dolled up for a royal party at the castle um, in Sintra, I think it is. Yeah, uh, but he's not invited by Yasky, like in the TV show. He is uh, invited by one of the lords, right? I thought he was actually invited by the queen. I think it's like she wants him there, but she can't invite him herself. She's got to, got to use a third party. Hmm. Okay. And yeah, he also has to come with a um, undercover name. He has to pretend to be some honourable lord from where. Yeah. I don't think that sticks around very long, does it? <laughs> No, no, not really. It's hard to keep a very obvious witcher <laughs> undercover. 
Yeah. He's super overt. He's like, he's not, he doesn't do subtlety. I mean, yeah. his humorous is subtlety, but uh, the rest of it, not so much. <laughs> no. So, yes, she made sure that he's there, but she didn't really tell him beforehand why she actually wants him to be there. And yeah. while they're sitting in the ballroom having the feast and fancy party going on, she's like, well, like, hypothetically, if there would be a monster here tonight, you would kill them, right? And it's all very her not saying what she actually means, but being like, uh, if I there was somebody, like... I'd want you to kill them, would you kill them? Yeah, but she kind of implies that they're human, which is so he's like, nah, I don't kill humans. <laughs> she's like, ugh, ugh. But what yeah, if they're and, from this terrible community? <laughs> oh, the shame. And, and what if I give you, like, a lot of money? Like a lot of money. <laughs> yes, she basically just keeps hinting at, like, everybody can be bought. Just tell me your fucking price. Yeah. He keeps being the all honorable, no man, I'm not into that. And no then, man, I'm not into that. <laughs> yeah, and then we have the exciting appearance of an unknown knight with a helmet that he doesn't take yeah. off. It's like, we've got to wait till midnight, then I'll take it off, it's fine! <laughs> and everyone's like, no, 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 no. Okay, so, I think don't think we covered why everybody's there. Well, yes, everybody pretty much came because this is all about getting the queen's granddaughter into, no, wait, uh, it's her daughter, daughter at this point. Um, yes, to get her daughter hitched. So everybody's there to present their sons and be like... Calm "Mm." down. It's her debut. It's just her debut. Well, let's face it, it's not really for any other purpose in these... Yeah, look, yes. She's being announced as a woman, and anybody who would like to take her hand, this is your chance to get in there and have your meet and greet. Yes. It may or may not be decided tonight, but we're looking about what... We're trying to see what you can offer. And the guy from the kingdom next door who's like, kingdom is just of shame, is who we think the bad guy is at the start of this story, right? Yeah, sort of. So they've got a weak, pathetic family line, and she's really not keen, not keen at all about them. But, or at least that's what she makes it sound like. Up until yeah. our unknown knight get in gets introduced right yeah and he just straight up go comes in and tells the story how he met the back then still alive king and saved his life and claimed the law of surprise which is pretty much just whatever you find at home once you get back and didn't expect to find there now belongs to the stranger (laughs) yeah which could have been like are quite a bountiful uh, harvest or um, a birth of a sheep, a puppy. Could be anything. Who yeah. knows? A tankard of ale. Um, not to be the case in this particular situation because his wife comes running out to him being like, I'm preggers. Yeah. I mean, I would just love to to see the king's face of going, fuck, I just gave a stranger our child. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think that he was gonna, the king was gonna lie to the queen. Queen Calanthe is pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, he definitely told her, because she definitely knew about the, the whole story, which, as it turns out, is the reason why she wanted the witcher there, because she had a feeling that the stranger is going to come to claim her daughter on that very night. And she is not. She's 15, that. by the way. Oh, just these, these are not women. These are girls. Yes. In all of the stories. <laughs> yes. So pretty much we have the, the stranger showing up, telling everybody about the story, how he came to be, I don't know, in the position of, more or less owning the fucking princess, which is also really creepy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we have Queen Calanthe going, well, fine, the story is kind of true, but I'm definitely not just going to give you my daughter because my husband was really fucking stupid. 
Yeah, so we get into fisticuffs, just a little bit of light fisticuffs, particularly when, yeah. when we find out that um, the unknown knight, whose name is Urchin, <laughs> yes. um, is actually a like furry beast, got whiskers, not exactly the most attractive looking dude. Yeah. Also, I don't think he's, um, he's anybody of like any title or anything like that. No, he's, he's got, some he's not of note. Yeah, he's, he's not of note, that's for sure. Um, so there's a great big debate, a little bit of fisticuffs. Um, everybody's attacking everybody but uh, Geralt and one of the other guys, who I can't remember the name of, they step in and actually defend our... I'm going to call him Hero. The Unknown Knight. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and they pretty much hold the fighting to the point... Oh, no, actually, I think we get to the point where it's starting to get really... Really it's, violent. It's looking... Yeah, it's and it's looking really bad for the... Um, for the monster my, uh, knight. <laughs> and then I think we have the uh, daughter Pavetta starting a slight uproar of magic. Yeah, she has a dangerously powerful outburst of chaos. <laughs> With just much excitement. Which I think, well, I think the movie did, uh, the TV show did a pretty good job of, of demonstrating that, where she goes a bit bonkers with power. Yeah, everything just flying and debris falling everywhere, and it's just very apocalyptic. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then Geralt manages to break through, uh, like, bonker on the head, um, and all the power, all the chaos is kind of reined in then. Um, and everybody's like, hey, 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 why did she step in? What's the feels on this situation? <laughs> yeah, surprisingly nobody goes, oh my god, what's with her powers? It's all just like, oh, oh yeah, fine, she has powers. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's very, it's I, very nonchalant. <laughs> yeah, she definitely has powers that she can use only sometimes. Bit of chaos mm. magic for anybody in there. Yeah, and then we have the whole revelation of Pavetta and the, I think Dooney is actually his like nickname. Or oh, whatever. cool, because I read that as Dunny. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> That's not, a, yeah, it's not a name you want here. <laughs> the good old Dunny and Pavetta. Um, oh, yeah, you she mean basically... the Pavlova and the Dunny? Yes, pretty much. Um, so Pavlova just comes out and is like, well, we've kind of met on accident one night and we've been seeing each other secretly and we're like super in love and we've also kind of hooked up maybe. And um, yeah, like, no, I, I definitely want him. So, so ta-da, like, the law of supplies is accepted. Yes, the queen's like, well, I still don't fucking like this, but fine, before you tear the whole castle down, fine. <sighs> yeah, so they 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 get the whole, they get the acceptance of them being now promised to each other and whatever. And then we just um, have Dooney going, well, Gerald, you like you fought for me in this fight five minutes ago, and I owe you. And Gerald was like, mm, I don't really want to, like, I don't want anything. And he's like, No, you have to take something because otherwise. This will be really bad. My will be besmirched. Yes, pretty much. And then Gerald is like, ah, oh, fuck. You know, I'll just do what, what you did. It'll be fine. I'll just take the law of the surprise. Law of surprise. Just, yeah, you just give me something you didn't expect uh, to get. It'll be fine. I'll just get a, I don't know, a great oh, big pig. She's pregnant. Bam, yes. <laughs> Perfetta just goes, fuck, I'm pregnant. <laughs> ah. And I think we also have, I think there we we have a difference to the TV show because I think Gerald actually goes and wants the kid to be raised as a witcher. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. So Geralt's like, yes, this child now needs to be like claimed for the witches, and they're like, <laughs> and no. <laughs> yeah, because I think it's been like a really long time that the last witcher has been created and I think they're more of a dying out breed so it's like oh great another child we can turn into a witcher excellent 
Yeah, but the story then ends with that matter without being resolved, and we move on to the next one. Yeah, pretty much. So, we don't know. Well, we do know. <laughs> but we don't know. Did he get the babe or not? <laughs> yeah, so we're going back to the temple, and now we're finally being introduced to Yeskia on the book. He's actually just Dandelion, I think. Uh, I think it depends on which translation you, you get. Mm, okay. So he's Dandelion I, in the video games. I've, the I've book only... I've got is he, he's Yeskia. I think I've only read him as Dandelion, but I'm not sure now. Mm. Well, in any case, we get introduced to the bard who just gets on Geralt's nerves all the time. Yeah, they're best friends. <laughs> Clearly, because they drive each other mad. Absolutely bonkers. Or, you know, they're in love, but it's fine. <laughs> yes, it's not like we have so many people online <laughs> being occupied by that thought. Look, I think that the character in the TV show is probably a little bit more flamboyant than the one in the book, or at least the version of the book that I read. He's a little bit more women-oriented in the book. We like we get a lot more, less like fawning over Geralt and more like, hey, cutie um, kind of thing. Or at least he may be fawning yeah. over Geralt, but there's a lot of like side stories about him and his adventures with other women. Like, we bump into those women all the time. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So they start talking, and we'll get into the next adventure of Geralt and Yaskia actually um, stopping over in some town or other and being approached, as they're always approached, by somebody who needs a monster taken care of. And... I think they are sent out to take care of this devil. I think it's just... Yeah, devil or demon. Yeah. And yeah, they're pretty much going out there being like, well, there aren't really any devils. But sure, we'll we'll find you a monster and we'll kill it and it'll be fine. And then we get Geralt and Dandelion or Yaskia being pretty much overwhelmed and taken hostage by, I think it's elves, right? Oh, you have jumped way far ahead. Ah, well, small parts. They're not small parts, because we talk about, like, okay, so, we enter the town. It's super cool. There's a child, there's a woman who's the prophetess, right? Yeah. And there's also the child who serves her as a prophetess. And the town's like, no, we cool... Um, with them doing their black magic business, but not with the demon. And he's like, what did you do with the demon? They're like, we consulted this super magical book that tells us how much it costs for a demon to go away. And like, costs? Like, yeah, we tried to pay him to leave. That didn't work. So we provided him with ammunition, so now he can throw balls at, balls of lead at you. And they're like, oh, fuck. Really? Why? Anyway, <laughs> so they go off to fight this demon, uh, thinking it's a, or sorry, a devil, um, and then being like, wait a minute, this ain't no devil. It's a word that I can't pronounce because I'm incapable of talking. In oh, the, yeah, wait, it's the whole devil thing? No, not the weird spelling of devil in Old English. I'm talking like, they. it's like a... I think in, 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 wait, in Polish, I think it was the Sviata or something? Yeah, that sounds right. Whose name is Tork. Right? But he's basically half goat, half... He's a fawn, to a large extent. <laughs> yes. You know, traditionally what people think devils look like, fawn. <laughs> then we get to the elves, right? Okay, yes, eventually we do get kidnapped by the elves, but after we have a bunch of discussions with uh, Tork, which is na- he turns his name... Yeah, which his name turns out to be. Yes. Oh, he's a right? sylvan. There we go. Yeah. What that is in any greater detail, I do not know. Well, it's, yeah, pretty much a form. Uh, so, wait. yeah, they're kidnapped. Yes. Their captors Sorry, turn out yes. to be elves. Which um, I think 
I think it's um, the same with the TV show, right? That they're in hiding because the humans kind of fuck them over. Yeah, they drove them out of the the glen or the valley or whatever it is. <laughs> Their homeland. Yeah, they've been kidnapped. Geralt uh, wakes up and he's like, people are talking this weird talk. And our friend Yaskia slash Dandelion is like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> a lot, like a lot. Then one of the, uh, the female elf comes in to like taunt Geralt. Geralt's like, I'm not human. This isn't my problem. Yeah, uh, I think it's actually the queen, isn't it, of the elf no, people? No, she's there. not a queen. No, the key, like there's the leader comes in later, but she and he are not the same. Ah, okay. Anyway, Geralt's like, I'm sick of you trying to torment me. I'm gonna headbutt you and slam you into the ground. <laughs> then all the other elves are like, whoa, 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 mate. And then we get your King of the Elves dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure in the Phila books it was actually Vandral? a woman. Nah, it's a dude. Hmm, okay. So I, the the main, like, antagonist is the, is the female elf. And then Philandral yeah. comes in and he's like, he wants to kind of just get everything sorted out without a huge amount of violence. And Geralt is like, I'm not human. Like, stop judging me with these people. I'm not human. Like, I'm not... Step back. I'm not human. Yeah, pretty much. And then... Now, he is where your female leader comes in. The queen of the fields. Mm, okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Comes in. Uh, and all the elves are like, oh no! And she's like... And we're like, we have no idea what's going on. And then all the elves are like, fine, let him go. And then they yeah. clap, yes, yeah, yeah. and they all leave. I <laughs> Yes, pretty much. Gamal. They're like, hey, Gamal, what should we do with this guy? And he's just like, ah, I don't know, just giving a couple of slaps and he'll be fine. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, sure, that sounds good. Yeah, and basically talk and... Dandelion and Geralt like head off trying to figure out what to do next taking the villagers like how to guide with them to be like well I guess we gotta go find something else to do but um a big part of that story though is like the subtext particularly of the queen of the fields where she's because of the the young child prophetess and the old lady prophetess is like something that the elves used to have and they're no longer the chosen people of the valley. And the that's one of the like the big things is like the elves have to learn that they're no longer the chosen people, and they need yeah. to adapt, and overcome, rather than try and like take back the the space. Because to a large extent, the the gods, the queen of the valley, or sorry, the queen of the fields, has like abandoned them. And um, that like there's this huge period of debate between um, Geralt and philandral about what the future of the elven race looks like um yeah i got a lot of um i got a lot of lot of the rings vibes at that stage it just felt like "Mm, the time of the elves might be over and it's the time of the humans yeah like there's a fair amount of that but i like um Geralt is like advocating for into intermixing and interbreeding because the the elves just can't produce babies the way they used to, or the way they do when they're young, and they're all of their young men went off to war in, you know, a hundred years ago, and they've never had any young men since. So they, <laughs> or the young elves since, and it just means that they don't, they, they really they can't breed unless they start breeding with people. Yeah, which is just a strange thought of like, hey, we don't have any young hot guys anymore. We only have the old mm, guys, so we might need to find some human women who are willing to take them. Basically, it's like you need to start crossbreeding because uh, you can't breed otherwise. <laughs> yes, it's a strange story. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. And one last trip back to the temple. Yes. Because... Once more with finesse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're back once again with 
Ninek, eh? That fucking name, man. Um, I, I feel like you're nailing the pronunciation because we have no idea. Yeah, that's the thing. We have never... And I hate having to read those fantasy books with all the crazy names and then you hear the audiobooks and you're like, fuck, I pronounced this wrong the whole time in my head. That's why I'm never listening that's to the awesome. audiobook. I'm not completely sure anymore which ones are the real names and which ones I just kept pronouncing wrong, but... Mm. Uh, yes, so we're back at the temple, we're back with Neneke, and they're talking about Yennefer, which hasn't been introduced yet, but which leads us to our next adventure yeah. story. So we get a lot of the, like, context where, like, Geralt is, like, definitely in love with her, but they're having a massive fight, and they refuse to talk to each other, and everybody's like, guys, just leave each other alone, stop being dicks, and they're both like, nah, no, this is not how we work. <laughs> But um, yes. I think one of the subtle things to also pick up is that the the whole story takes place in a greenhouse with all those magical herbs and stuff, stuff that's mm. not found anywhere else on the planet. Because, like, the, the temple is very much there for medicine more than anything else and teaching about medicine, as opposed to any of the other temples that we come across later. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I think it just it just trying to understand how this these people have so much power to like tell everybody to fuck off when Geralt's there and they're trying to arrest him, or you know later in the next book when spoilers, yeah, extra spoilers because we're definitely not spoiling spoilering this whole book ever. <laughs> so basically, we we get into the new the new next story where it's um. Yeske and Geralt fishing for breakfast, and they haul up an ancient um, vase, I suppose. Yeah. And Geralt is like, leave your hands off the vase. <laughs> and Yeske is like, no, let's open the vase. <laughs> yeah, it's got a leviathan in it. It's going to be great. <laughs> yes, it's always good to open mysterious ancient vases. Hmm. <laughs> So, yes, they do open the fucking vase. It's all, I think it's very dramatic mist coming out and a genie. Yeah, and it's a gin. So. Yes. Well, it's a genie, let's face it. It's not, though, okay, so, like, a gin, if you look, so a gin is from the, like, Islamic kind of uh, myths. Which is uh, a demon that can grant you wishes where you have to be very careful because it can also, like, it takes them very literally in the sense of, like, it's definitely going to try and cause you harm and can also do, like, a whole bunch of, like, body switching stuff. So if you're not careful with your witches, it can have your life, basically. Like, it'll yeah. live your life for you. Um, so, um, yeah. At least I hope that's the character they're going for with that translation. I don't think so. I mean, we have Yeskia rambling on with all the things he's wishing for, and the djinn not doing shit all. And yeah. his dad is attempting to strangle him. Yeah, because uh, Geralt goes, I wish you would shut up. Yeah. Which is, Which the is first super story. telling, right? Yes. So then we have Yeskia in distress, and Gerald being like, fuck, well, okay, I'm gonna have to go into hero mode now. So yeah, he's, so he's grabbing Yeskia and... Time. Yeah, but he puts him on Roach. Big, big moment, right? Somebody else gets to ride Roach, because we're just trying to get him into town to find him a doctor. <laughs> yes. So we're finding, I think, two elves who are having a look at Yeskia and trying to help him, more or less. And I think that's when we also find out that there's um, a witch some, or a wizard somewhere in town making some crazy, um, doing some crazy magic, and Geralt deciding, yeah, fuck, let's, let's find that person to help us. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a risk on any kind of magician at this point. <laughs> yeah, since his last encounter with a wizard went so well. Uh, um, yeah. So we race off to find the wizard, which turns out to be less wizardy and more witchy. 
Yes, we are. We are finally getting introduced to Yennefer, the sorceress. And I think she's taking she's taking up residence at the maybe mayor's house or like I think it's close to a mayor. I'm not sure what other title I would give him. Yeah, like town important important person. <laughs> yes. And basically goes, ah, well, you gotta help my friend here. <laughs> He's more yeah. or less dying because I was kind of stupid and he was kind of stupid and there was fishing involved and a gin and a vase. Mm. Yeah, so um, Geralt like arrives at the place where uh, the witch is staying, beats down the doorman with a bag of gold, <laughs> then yes, like do. runs. Yes, yeah, inside, trying to go wherever the, wherever way is in, and arriving in Yennefer's bedroom, <laughs> she's like, she fires lightning at him, Geralt's like, nah, I got you, with his weird magic, and like, absorbs it, and then he's like, now will you pay attention and go help my friend downstairs, who's next to your unconscious doorman. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I kind of like the, um, I think it's that, I don't know, important mayor town guy whose house she's pretty much snatched up. Who, He's an ambassador. Who, ah, yes, there we are. Um, who who tells Geralt that she's, um, she's a beautiful sorceress, but she's not to be trusted, <laughs> which is pretty much just sums up her character. <laughs> yeah. So Yennefer has to have a bath first. So that everybody gets to see her naked. Um, and yes, we get very important. Geralt's like commentary on the side, which is like, oh yeah, you know that's a spell. That's not real beauty. Sorceresses aren't pretty. That's all magic. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because good looking hey. women aren't good looking. No, 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 no. They're all ugly and malformed. Yeah, and then once dress, uh, dressed, they... Um, Go and go and see Yaski? Yaskia? There we go. I should just use Dandelion. I'm gonna stop trying. Like <laughs> fine. Yes, let's let's opt for the easy version out. <laughs> yeah, so she does she does agree to help him. And I think if I remember correctly, she like helps him first and then they discuss the price afterwards, which seems like a sneaky way to do it. Yeah. And she wants her price right away. Like, Cause right why now. fucking wait? <laughs> yeah. And, and then Geralt, like, basically passes out, doesn't he? Yeah. And um, wakes up in a cell. Yeah. Which, you um, know, it's just always great. Always trust the woman who kind of turns you into the authorities. Yeah, and his, his cellmate turns around and goes, oh yeah, you went rampaging through the town, like slashing and stabbing at whoever Yennefer, like, anyone who'd ever insulted Yennefer. <laughs> yes. Which, mm, great price to pay, Geralt. Yeah. Uh, and then they go to get hung, right? Um, yeah. They're supposed to get, <laughs> they're supposed to get hung. But, yeah, I think that's when we get the second fucking big clue that Geralt is the one who has the wishes over here. Yeah, because the genie is back. The genie yes. is back. And Geralt just expresses his deep desire that the guard would, I think, just bursting. Oh, yeah. And then he just does, which is fucking great. Um, yes, so now we realize, if we didn't already before, that it's Geralt who's getting all the witches, not Dandelion. And Geralt's like, all right, fuck, let's go back to Dandelion and Yennefer and sort that shit out. Yeah, but uh, Yennefer has realized that the genie is here and she's trying to trap it so she can do all the things that she needs to do with her genie. Yes. And Geralt arrives just in time, but Yennefer does not want to be saved. <laughs> no, because she insists that she's the all-powerful, the all-knowing, incredible it and thinks that she can trap all the powers from the djinn for herself which is definitely too much for her yeah and then basically the two of them 
portal around town trying to escape the djinn and destroying the whole town. From building to building, in and out of different countries. And also that Yennefer and Geralt are also having a bit of a fight themselves. Yes, there's um, definitely a weird sort of chemistry going on. Yeah. If you're really into women who can beat you up. <laughs> but uh, Yes, because she has to be the, the, the female badass bitch, so she has to be able to beat everybody up. It's important. Yeah. And then finally, our protagonist, who's actually as dumb as a box of bricks, unlike the readers here, realized that he has all of the wishes. Yes, pretty much. And we also have the the point of, since the, the genie hasn't actually fulfilled the last wish, Yennefer can't actually capture it. So it's all about Geralt finally having his last wish. Yeah, so Yennefer can't have the genie until Geralt's done with it. Geralt realizes that Yennefer was a hunchback, uh, and then he decides upon his last wish, which isn't explicitly stated. Uh, does then it... they back. <laughs> yes, it's actually, is the last wish revealed in the next books? Like, really explicitly said what he wished for? I don't think so. He he wished for something for her, right? Yeah. And I don't know if it was, like, that she actually got the body of her dreams or that she got some of the powers of it, you know? Yeah. Well, in any case, the whole town is destroyed and in ruins and they just fuck amidst the rubble, basically. Yeah. And that ends the story. Dum, dum, dum. Da, da, da. Yeah. So I loved this book. Like, I really enjoyed this book. And I love Yennefer. I've, I've been really condescending about our bad, badass bitch phenomenon, but I love their relationship. I love that she's like, I don't have time for you, little man. And he's like, look, I'm bigger than you think I am. And she's like, yeah, okay, maybe you are. <laughs> to be honest, I was more of a fan of of Renfrey than Yennefer, I have to say, in terms of, I don't know, love interests go. Yeah. Because it was the whole the whole build-up story of, well, all these women who were born under these these circumstances, and they're all the evil, and we have to kill them, and it's all, like, it's laid out as this, this is how it's going to go. And then they swap over to Renfrey's side of the story, and now it's all very fucking confusing, and nobody knows anymore who is what and why anybody's doing what. And she's just like, well, I just want to live and get my revenge, so fuck off. Yeah, I've, I've got very more. I've got more real world goals, like which is to <laughs> not die. And the easiest way to not die is to uh, kill you. <laughs> yes, pretty much. Also, I mean, she had the balls to attempt to kill Geralt. Yeah, it did not end well, but she did fucking go for it. And she yeah. decided to die, that that's the hill she's gonna die on. Yeah, which is odd choices, but, um, you know, whatever floats you go. Yes, pretty much. But, yeah, I really like the book, uh, the book too, as well. I like the whole the whole setup of the, the little adventures in between the, the nice setup at the temple. And I think it was a really good introduction to the character. It was a really good building of the character. Yeah, I, I like the... We get a like a jump cut for where where we get the story behind where all the other things are coming from. So mm, like yeah. we're having this conversation with the priestess and we're just kind of constantly backfilling it. I think it was a really interesting way of doing it. I really did enjoy it. Yes. So. It's been really fun to watch the TV show too after reading the book because luckily they used a lot of the the main stories for that one. Yeah, and, and just I guess going it's hard like. To- ah. Yes, that's how I imagined it all. Or not. None of it was kind of how I imagined it. I Like, I'm really enjoying it, but none of it was how I imagined it. Mm, I don't know. I would say 50-50. Yeah? Yeah. So you you got, probably got a better imagination than I, then. <laughs> I'll I just taking it one. pretty literal. Yeah. Well, you, you and the producers are in the same vein, then. Well, better those producers than D&D. 
Um, yes. Well, yes. <laughs> so good book. Good book all around, I would say. Yeah, I'm very happy with that read. You definitely re- recommending it to all your friends? Yes, I would definitely recommend it. I haven't read any of the following books yet, but I think with this one, since you have the important stories... Yeah, and so the, the next one is far more linear, and nothing happens in it. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely recommend this one as, like, if you only have to or want to read one of the Witcher books, go for that one, because it has the interesting fucking stories. Yeah, the next one lays so much of the groundwork for the story that he, there's so much world building that kind of has to be done to, like, set you up that it's a bit more difficult to... to The narrative is much shorter. We get le- less of what's going on, but we get to know what's going on in far greater detail. Hmm, okay. Well, well, maybe we'll come back to that at some stage. Yeah. So, okay, maybe I'll give it... Ah, uh, no, I'm going to stick with my four stars. And you're going to stick with four and a half stars? Yeah, I think I'm happy with my four and a half. Okay, cool. Well, that's the end of this week's review. Yes, um, well, thank you for all of you or none of you out there. Yeah, thanks for sticking around to the end of these ridiculously long discussions about books where we get easily <laughs> distracted. And just keep rambling out for ages, yes. I appreciate that anybody that's stuck through two episodes. Um, next week we're going to talk about Across the Universe, which I fucking hated. I <laughs> yes. hate this book so This is going to be a very interesting oh. discussion. <laughs> I have a lot of things to say. Okay. Anyway, I'll save that for next week. Yes, but do follow us on Instagram or Facebook under Team Read Lightly and catch all the new episodes on Sundays on any of the on any of the usual platforms. Yeah. Yes, YouTube, SoundCloud, whichever one got so fancy. Yeah, or anything else that we can manage to figure out this time around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know how to end this. How do we end yeah. this? Yeah, we're, we're missing. We're missing like a, like some form of goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 I guess. Yeah.